What did you eat for breakfast? Coffee. <laughs> Just coffee. <laughs> we literally woke up uh, we one hour ago. <laughs> Welcome to Music on Your Own Terms, the podcast that aims to help musicians develop an entrepreneurial mindset through interviews, as well as discussing resources, concepts, successes, and more. Providing a platform to talk about negative emotions such as anxiety and depression in order to help overcome them in the context of music and reduce the social stigma. This is episode 142. This episode is sponsored by Ignite Your Music Career. You may remember in episode 90, I chatted to Craig Dodge about sync licensing and how he makes a living through writing music for TV, video games, and film. Musicians all over the world subscribe to Ignite Your Music Career and earn more royalties, more upfront sync fees, and more recurring revenue from their music. Whether you're a composer, singer-songwriter, band, beatmaker, or instrumentalist, your music can be earning you more money. Internationally acclaimed composer, musician, and music educator Craig Dodge has licensed his music in more than 1,000 TV show episodes, films, video games, and ads all over the world, and he will show you how you can too. Ignite gives you the information you need in a simple, accessible format, and you learn at your own pace. For just $6 a month, you get a video lesson each week on topics related to music licensing, from writing techniques to how to find your markets, and everything in between. You also get tools and activities to build the skills you need to be successful, and each lesson includes a royalty-free sound pack to download and use in your own music. The key to success in the music business today is to diversify your sources of revenue. Ignite will show you how. For more information or to subscribe to Ignite, visit the website at taris-studios.com or click the link on musiconyourownterms.com. Hailing from Italy and Turkey, attending Berkeley and the Musicians Institute, and now based in Los Angeles, Thunder Pets are truly a fusion of many styles and cultures, both musically and otherwise. In this inspiring conversation, I chat to brothers Dandy on guitar and Lorenzo on drums, as well as Gune on synths, about this brand new project that takes 80s virtuoso rock and merges it with a modern electronic sound to create Thunder Pets. The guys talk about their history of moving to the US to go to school, the various projects they've been involved in, and passionately discuss the artists that inspired them to dedicate their life to music. We also learn about the challenges of being a musician in today's crowded world, and what it takes to get your music heard with so many other people trying to do the same thing. If you enjoy the podcast and want to show your support, I'd be really grateful if you would consider signing up for the mailing list to stay in the loop with everything going on with the show. Just head over to musiconyourownterms.com and click the link. While you're there, you can also visit the store and grab some merch, or just buy me a coffee and help out with the running costs of the show. Thanks for listening. All right, welcome to another episode. Today, I'm hanging out with the guys from Thunder Pets. How you guys doing? Very well. Very good. Thank you, Simon. Awesome. You guys came to me from One uh, Percenter Entertainment, hey. who I also interviewed Mick and Maxie not too long ago, who, who's working with them. So that's great. So let's, yeah, let's just dig into the band and if you could introduce each person and then what you do in the band. Sure. Well, we're the Thunder Pets, and this is a fairly new project, you know, it's, I'm Dandy, by the way, and uh, I'm a lead guitar and voice. It's, uh, it's a band that me and my brother here, Steve, on drums. I had in, used to have in Italy before moving to the United States. Mm -hmm. And we decided meeting at Berkeley, the great Gune Southesizer, Southesizer, you know, just to, to give it a new face, if it mm -hmm. makes sense. You know, like uh, adding a lot of electronics and sound design, uh, upgrading a bit, making it a bit more modern rather mm -hmm. than a standard hard rock and metal that it's something that I enjoy no matter what, but you know, it was cool to give a bit of fresh air, you know? Awesome. Could you just describe the sound a little bit? What would people kind of think it was similar to, let's say? Th that's very hard to be honest, because like 
I, I'm not, first, I'm not a great listener, you know, right. like uh, I listen to very few people a lot, mm -hmm. but uh, I would say that there is like our music is a bit like, you know, the, the, um, like a melting pot of like uh, different rock styles and massive electronic uh, dubs and all this stuff, but this, uh, uh, can't, my Gune in here is going to be better. Uh, uh, yeah, where we are in the electronic part, we do very like, distorted bass, mm -hmm. uh, like a wobble basses, uh, very distorted low basses. It's it's a little sounds like a project of the corn with Skrillex. Okay, uh, they they work together once in a in their. Uh, I think it sounds a little bit sound like them, like a yeah, collaboration no, of corn and Skrillex. It's a on the rock side, we're more a bit, maybe a bit more traditional than less extreme. Let's. Mm -hmm. Heavy metal, a bit more rock and roll, if you know like what eight, I mean. Eighties, eighties, kind of sunset strip type rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know, like yeah. There's always a guitar solo. There is a, you know, th th those kind of things. You know, less modern on the rock side. What makes it modern is like the the massive presence of uh, of electronic, which is so present that we even uh, even uh, considered and made it happen to to exclude the bass, you know, because mm. like uh, first in the mixing sessions, it was a disaster every time, you know, to find a balance between the bass and the big fat uh, electronic stuff that was uh, going on. So we said, we just decided to, um, the, the tune, the tunes that we realized until today, they have a bass, but like uh, mm. we started to, the first one that big Ryan from one percenters is gonna release, uh, uh, it's gonna be already without. No, it's gonna be the last one with bass, actually. Okay. And uh, next one is gonna be already without bass and just electronic and rock and roll. Awesome. So you get you guys moved from Italy. Was that and and then you went? Did you both go to Berkeley? So oh, uh, yeah. two of them went. Yeah. And they met there. I went to Musician Institute here okay. in Los Angeles. Yep. And and they moved uh, here recently mm -hmm. yeah one one year ago one year and a half and uh, me and my brother <clears throat> me and steve are italian while right Gune is a uh, south sizer is uh turkish mm -hmm. and uh, we have a couple of session players it's a uh, jordan uh on, uh on the guitar and it was jason park on keyboards now unfortunately he had to leave because uh, you know like life of international in america is not easy so mm -hmm. <laughs> he had to leave uh, going to europe he's korean actually we're replacing him with, with another Italian, actually. <laughs> so it's going to be a big Italian community. It's a, a Riccardo Gresino, which play, who plays with me in other projects. Okay, awesome. But, so yeah. what, what prompted you guys to move from Italy and Turkey? Well, it was the opportunity, you know. In Italy, there's a lot of great talent people, mm -hmm. you know. Unfortunately, music is not taken as seriously. Honestly, if I had the same opportunities in Italy since the beginning, I don't think I, I would have moved. You know, very great life. Mm. But I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful to be supported and be surrounded by talented people and musicians. You know, I know eventually it will bring to some, to some more. And we saw that because uh, here you have opportunities to move forward pretty fast if you do it. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank Ryan. 1% are a lot because uh, the idea of the project is uh, many rock, as they said, they combine great technique with musicality. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to be like showing off for the musicians or be like, like everybody else as commercial, you know, we kind of mm -hmm. combine the two things in a, our way. And it's doable, you know, it's possible to plan concerts and uh, having the possibility to open to somebody bigger from the scratch, you know, mm -hmm. something in Italy that wouldn't happen. And uh, yeah, but, Ryan is, is yeah, really, all that. really thank, really thank you, Ryan, because you know, like he, he decided to sign with us to sign us even before seeing us live. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. he he knew my brother from uh, from other projects, and he saw him performing several times. Then I hear the Thunderpets music, and uh, w w like we were born literally this year, you know, 2021 is like a very fresh project. And 
he just heard the music and apparently he liked it at the point to decided to sign us without even uh, uh, see performance. You know, then then eventually he did and he enjoyed a lot, like a lot. Right. As but, I told him, you know, as I told him uh, many times, I I'm happy that he's really focusing on it. He's really looking at the details. You know, he was always like very open to listen what we were looking for and uh, move forward with us. Yeah, yeah it's really important. Definitely, definitely a great professional and a great human being. Definitely. Great. You know, why, why the move from Turkey to, to the States? Uh, for me, it's, it was more like uh, for education. Mm -hmm. I have a classical background while I was working in an orchestra, classical orchestra back in Turkey. But I, I, have, I have a dream to be an electronic producer. So um, I came to Berkeley because of that. Actually, that's right. where we met, Hell Berkeley. Yeah. yeah, I came to Berkeley College of Music. I studied electronic production design. And after that, I just, you know, I, yeah, like Laurie told us, uh, the opportunities were way better than our country. Mm -hmm. So I decided to stay. Awesome. I'm based in Texas now, but my wife's from outside of Boston and we, we were up there for uh, 18. I was up there 18. I'm originally from England. I moved there. Ah. So we were up there 18 years. How'd you guys find the, uh, the winter? Because I couldn't uh, stand it. That's why oh, we moved. Uh, oh, but man. I, it was painful. I'm, yeah, I'm a guitar player and I was in performance at Berkeley. Mm -hmm. So like it's, um, you play a lot. And uh, during winter, and I'm very delicate, you know. I don't know why. Also, my hands are very delicate, everything. And I used to go with a with three gloves each hand, you mm -hmm. know, because it was like it was death, you know. It's it's something that I said. I mean, I love Boston because it's a very very pretty city, you know, oh, safe, yeah. clean. But uh, as soon as I finished, I said, uh, I gotta get get the hell out of here as soon as I can go in a warm place and Los mm -hmm. Angeles. My 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 brother Steve was already there, and uh, we, we we're having like a really good time despite the pandemic and uh, right. all the all the the things around. Like we're having a really great time. Awesome. What what cities are you are you from originally? In Italy, mm -hmm. it's a small village, you know, in extreme uh, north uh, northwest. Uh, we're right uh, at the beginning of the Alps on the west side. And uh, the, the the closest the closest uh, city is Turin. Where whereabouts in Turkey are you from? I'm from Adana. It's a uh, fourth biggest city in the Turkey mm -hmm. in the south. That's why my name is Gine. It's Gine means south in Turkish. Mm -hmm. And Adana is located in the south. People of the Adana like really love their city. So you know, my, my parents named Gine. Also, actually, why stage name Southizer mm -hmm. comes from Gine. I mix the south, south yeah. with the synthesizer. That's awesome. So we covered how the band started. What what other projects do you work on? You know, I, I definitely checked out Dandy your your solo stuff, which is ridiculous as a guitar player. Uh, we, sorry to the other guys, but you know, we're gonna do a bit of a guitar nerd rabbit hole uh, cool. in a bit. But yeah, yeah, it sounds more uh, kind of jazz fusion to me. Uh huh. Yeah. What what other projects do you guys work on outside of the, this band? Well, first, thank you very much, and uh, I'm glad you, you liked it. I know that it's uh, not so easy to to listen to that stuff. It's uh, for me, it's rock. Imagine for mm. me, it's rock. You know that no matter what, because rock is often you know they don't people don't give to rock the right credit. You know, like uh, it's uh, it's uh, it, you know it's gonna people talk about jazz fusion and all this stuff, and it's, it's fine. You know, as like very classy, very classy, and um, somehow intellectual genres you know but the, the the truth is that the ultimate truth in my opinion is that rock is uh, on top of everything because it's the easiest one you know to you can mix it with jazz you can mix it with whatever and you can say you can mix whatever with whatever you know and it makes sense but if you add the uh, distorted guitar to jazz uh, is it still jazz with the uh, yeah if you if you put jazz sonority inside rock it, it's still rock is mm -hmm. a lot matter of sounds and and attitude attitude you know so um, i'm i'm very glad that you like it and um i'm like th that that solo stuff it's divided in two parts actually you know one is am dandy that's it solo and uh, we we're working on some new very very cool mm -hmm. material uh that is going to come out 
uh, before the end of this year. It just takes time, you know, like... Uh, oh, sure. You know, like uh, independent productions are like uh, long mm-hmm. as they are. And uh, the other one, also with the other one, AM Dandy and the Elements, we recently released uh, uh, our second studio album named Oracle, which is available in every, every platform. Uh, we're about to we're about to release a third album, which gr- with a great guest. And with a, at this point, uh, I'm gonna say it even if I had to wait a bit. But with Mart- Martin Miller, Nick Johnston. Uh, oh, cool! I love Nick. Yeah, Bre- Brett Garson. Oh, wow! Yes, I know. Amazing! Like, trust me. You're gonna, if you like that. If you like the, the other stuff, like Secret Garden, Oracle, I'm gonna go crazy for this one. It, this is a bit more. F- Fusionish. Mm-hmm. This is an EP. It's just a three songs EP, but uh, but it's crazy. What well, with AM Dandy is um, I'm gonna be with uh, Steve on drums still. Cool. And uh, we're doing a like a, we're gonna release a, actually a couple of albums because uh, we produce a lot. You know, we like to to put out a lot of new <clears throat> music, and that's it. I I hope you're gonna you're gonna dig into it as well. Yeah, and I, I was looking around. There's uh... SVI and then Fire Tiger. Fire Tiger is more of like an 80s. Yeah, it is. Yeah, SVI is out of the picture since a long time ago. Was a great friend of mine still. Uh, you know, Robert Dobbs, you know, he's also the cousin of my wife. So it's yeah. to be correlated <laughs> for me somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Fire Tiger is a, is, a, is a very nice band. You know, we got the guitar player from them. It was, it was. I, in Thunder, I, but yeah. Yeah. Jordan. I asked him, you know, I asked him to join us because um, I've been playing there for a while, actually, you know. Yeah, he's nice, great guys, you know. They are pretty, also pretty, pretty strong in Hollywood, you know, like. Uh... Yeah, they are. And thanks to them, I, I've been going around enough, you know, to know how to move better with Thunder. Mm-hmm. So I'm grateful for that. Yeah, at this uh, initial stage, uh, of uh, Thunderpad's journey, uh, Steve is taking care of a lot of uh, a lot of stuff also outside music, you know. So that's that's great because like he's he's a bigger experience in uh, Hollywood scene. He's uh, he's helping us a lot. So because like we're totally you new. Know, because imagine that when uh, me and uh, and uh, South Sizer moved to Los Angeles, basically there was. The pandemic mm-hmm. going on, you know, so like we didn't even had the chance for real to to get into the Hollywood scene properly. Sure. So this is like a yeah, a game changing. Cool. Any other projects that you guys have or want to talk about? I, I have also like um, some electronic projects uh, that I'm working on. I do um, drum and bass, dubstep, side trends, future bass. Uh, recently, actually, uh, yesterday I had a, another single released. Called kiss and kiss me and dance. It's a kiss side me trend. and dance. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> he's he's a he's a bad guy because he's <laughs> like a, he's really. I love uh, when when I asked him to to join the Thunder Pets, that was not Thunder Pets yet. It was like a really really the scratch at the very beginning. Uh, we we actually used to to live together mm-hmm. in Boston, you know, during during Berkeley for a couple of sem one or two semesters. First, our neighbors probably hated us like. A, to death because like we were like i i don't even know how we used to do but we were in the same room both of us me practicing guitar and he producing electronic things like ev- everything at massive <laughs> volumes like at the point that the walls you know hold the all the houses in boston like queensbury street and fanway mm-hmm. the walls were like literally shaking you know and uh, every time I, I, I used to hear like the neighbors dancing with the with the broom, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. What the fuck? So, <laughs> also, <laughs> also, you know, I think the Gune sound, you know, it's it's a, it's a very original, you know, and it's like nothing else you 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 hear around. You know, because it's like the same concept everywhere. Yeah, he has a he has a very very unique. Uh, very unique way, you know, very unique style. And uh, I love his uh, really, uh, like, uh, he's not just aggressive, he's also like a, a sweet boy. But, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, what I really, like, I've been, what I've been really uh, shocked about was like his aggressivity in some parts, you know, like a use of the bass, of the wobbles, of the effect. Then like, 
he's he's really complete you know but like that what what, uh, what i liked the most is was really this uh strong approach every heavy approach you know awesome yeah so I'll, I'll definitely have to put get get all these links from you guys and i'll put them in the show notes page so everyone can check out each individual uh music project so that'll be that'll be awesome you mentioned you were you're doing more of the uh the business side talk about that i mean what what have you learned through through being in the in that that scene down there and what what are some su- surprising things you've learned well a lot you know a lot of surprising things you know unfortunately <laughs> uh, like it is not what everybody thinks out mm. here it, you know it's not at all everybody thinks you're, you're you're in los angeles you know you come here you play you you you, you know you, you're gonna be famous and rich three days after because it's you but it's not gonna happen you know and uh it's just not happening for the fact that there's a lot of people trying to do it mm-hmm. and there's a lot of people trying to do this because the price is big you know once you get over a sort of line you know so there's a uh, a lot of great people doing it but it's not just about that not mm-hmm. at all actually you start from that when you arrive you really have to be good you know and uh, you know from there you have to build up your name first by yourself, and then you have to have your own band. So first, I always recommend to have your own thing for a lot of reasons, you know, because uh, I see the band as a coffee shop, as a business. Damn, you know? there's no deep, deep shit. No, there's no, there's, <laughs> there's no different than that. Yeah. First, there's one uh, universal rule. That nothing can change it is if you don't invest any money, you're not gonna get any money. Mm-hmm. That's it. There's no other way around, you know. So if you expect to come here and uh, yeah, sure you go around and you don't pay anything to go around and play, you can do that. You, you're gonna play a hundred percent in front of nobody because nobody pay for somebody that doesn't know, you know. Mm. So then you need to have your product that has to be very good. Then you have to produce it very good. They cost money. You have to promote it. They cost money, and then you have to go around, and you have to, and you want to go around with a crowd in the front to make sure people know you in the right way, and you have to do it with the bands or the project that are closer to you. You cannot go too far from that, even if there's people in the front. They don't, they don't like that because they got to see the guy that plays some sort of things, and you're in the front. Sure, you know somebody. But, you know, you always have to do. So it's just three things, you know, and you can really miss one of those. If you take one of those out, it's missing all of it, mm. you know. Yeah, so yeah. What, 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 uh, the long story short of that is that, you know, this might, might sound like something, you know, not, not Bano, but, you know, that everyone knows, like, invest on in your product, you know. like It, it, it sounds like it's something that everyone would know. The point is that, and I agree with him. A lot of people that we met, like the the that we met, that they are not in Los Angeles yet, or they arrived recently, or whatever. They expected to maybe they 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 didn't like it a lot. They didn't like the scene a lot because they expected to get in here. But very good musicians, though, huh? and um, they expected to get in Los Angeles, and everything would would uh, would happen, you know, mm. automatically. But you know, like as every every other, like play every anywhere else, uh, you gotta you gotta invest on on what you do. Either that you're a musician or like a, a painter or a, I don't know whatever else, you know. So yeah, I agree with that. I mean, it's nothing, nothing, nothing like surprising. But yeah, like I don't, I don't understand. No, I didn't listen. <laughs> no that that's oh, awesome advice i mean yeah i always have this analogy of you see people saying you know complaining that they're not getting paid to play you know uh what's the meme a musician is is somebody who spent five thousand dollars on gear to put in a five hundred dollar car to get paid fifty dollars <laughs> but at the yeah, same state it's same. like well you don't train to be a plumber buy all your equipment to be a plumber and then instantly start a business and be successful. You have to work at the business side at that point. So yeah. it's why should being a musician be any different? 
Yeah, but, no, I agree. That that's a good. Well, but it's a, so the, the phrase that you said is a hundred percent real, and that's mm -hmm. happening in uh, Los Angeles. I think it's happening everywhere else too. Yeah, and you know what? The concept of it is wrong since the beginning, because you don't chase the fifty bucks concert. You know, yeah, you buy all the. Gear. I mean, you can, but uh... yeah, but it's not gonna. You know, you're chasing the wrong thing. You're right. not chasing the high price of it. You know, mm -hmm. you're chasing. So let's say as a cough, I just correlate everything to there. You know why? Because it's something that it's easy to sell. Everybody like like the music. You know, but if you don't know that it's there, you, you're not gonna go. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. it. That's it's like, as simple. Uh -huh. And you know, <laughs> it's pretty simple actually. The concept of uh, the business of it. You know, obviously, you know explainable way not not their rules and laws and all this, you know but so it's just like you know if you're chasing to sell the espresso to the guy because it's gonna give you three dollars you're never gonna sell three thousand co coffees a day because they're chasing the one guy is buying that from you you know same as oh i expect to go around and get paid sure i get hired to play whatever you know thing and i'm chasing that and i'm not chasing so a big problem for example here is to find people serious enough to do it constantly, like to play, to have your own project. You know, you know mm. how many projects I've been having here since I arrived, I arrived three, four years ago or something. Been playing with everybody around here. I'm not playing with anybody anymore. I mean, a couple of projects, but it's not, you know, mm. it's not my own thing. You know. Then never forget, never forget. Like there was, I, I used to have a teacher, a professor, a conservatory back to it that I used to say. Uh, guys, if you choose music to get money, change change job. <laughs> so, I mean, ultimately, uh, musician. I mean, people. You, you should be a musician for whatever reason makes you happy. You know, mm -hmm. normally it should be because like, you know you follow either your artistic voice or whatever. You know, you want to express your artistry. You know, if uh, if you do it. Uh, for for the money, you know, or whatever, for the glory and the money together. If it makes you happy, like, uh, that's perfect. Amazing. Uh, normally, I mean, just be conscious that, like, uh, <laughs> you might have a couple of troubles, you know, at least in the beginning, you know. Mm. So, but if it's something that pushes you to, to get better, for sure, you know, no, no problem. Who, I, who am I to, to complain about that? But... Uh, it's not a, it's not a job that you can do and expect to to be. it's it's a, it's not like any other job you know that that's what i mean it's like a very unique uh, very unique case uh, and uh, uh follow f like doing for like doing it for artistic reason and to you know to share whatever you want to share it's uh, it's always the best way in my opinion and uh, ma money like money eventually will come you know whatever it is absolutely have you have you guys explored uh, sync licensing at all and got any placements for the, uh, for the thunder pets or in general for for a, for any project well for the thunder pets not yet but just because uh, as as i mentioned it's a really newborn like mm -hmm. uh, uh, project you know uh, I had uh, like I had the placements with uh, with uh, AM Dandy and AM Dandy and the Elements and probably kind of like uh, uh, sync placements. Sync placement? Yeah, I'm not really sure what sync. <laughs> yeah, I mean, We're like uh, old souls, you know. Like when it's about like uh, all these terminologies and things you mean, or you mean computers. The, the <laughs> like, like, no, no, no. But yeah, like soundtracks or a advertising yeah. or video games. Like stuff that, that the music can be placed into. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've been like actually, I I've been signed to uh, Tinderbox Music. Okay. Nothing, nothing, nothing regarding Tinder. You know, it's mm. just a Tinderbox <laughs> Music. Right. It's uh, like I've been often asked about that, <laughs> but um, uh, it it was a, a curious experience. Like I, it was a very positive experience. It's. Uh, uh, it was with the AM Dandy in the elements, so I don't know how much uh, I would suggest uh, this kind kind of things. I mean, because there are people that actually think like ask me uh, how it works uh, to mm. uh, to do it, you know, to ask right. to look for a, a label that uh, that uh, make placement in media and all this stuff. It's a it's you know it's a basically it's a passive it's a good passive uh, mm -hmm. source of income you know so 
who's looking for money. <laughs> so honestly, something about that. We are. I mean, me personally, uh, you know, I'm not looking to go to the, you know, these people, you know, whoever they are that put the music, you know, in the things and say, hey, get my music because it's perfect for your movie, whatever, you know. The guy is listening to the music and say, I had this song is perfect for the movie, you know. So I don't want to like, you know, like try to try to push it in and say, oh, I wish I'm putting something so I'm, I'm receiving. But, but like you did this are anyway, like a no, good it's thing. Obviously hopefully, something... hopefully they're gonna they're gonna happen. Yes, but it has to happen because the music is perfect for, for the movie. Uh, it wouldn't convince it, you. That, you that it it wouldn't. <laughs> don't worry that it wouldn't happen otherwise. So. Yeah, I mean the thing that the the real, the eye opener for me was you you familiar with uh, Pliny, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So Pl I was I was watching, or I wasn't watching. I'm not really into football, but uh, I was around at a friend's house and they were watching the game, and like the commercial break came up, and I'm like, oh wait, turn that up, and I I recognized something that uh, one of Pliny's tracks in the NFL. So it, it like my wheels oh. were spinning because he's he's always touring in America. And, you know, yeah. he's not like, he's popular in the guitar community, but he's not like in, in general terms, he's yeah, not a big artist. So I'm like, obviously, you know, I, I, I just came up with the fact that if he's in the NFL, the NFL are paying quite a lot of money. So oh, that yeah. side of it is obviously helping him tour America and putting out his stuff and working with, you know, mm. different companies. So it just, it just like yeah, sparked my interest certain. hearing Pliny, somebody that I'm really in, you know, listen to a lot yeah. that's in the yeah. NFL where people probably wouldn't know who he is. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, met probably 90% of them. I'm actually yeah. surprised that you're saying that, like uh, you give me like, giving me big, big, like something that I would have never expected, right? Not, because it, yeah, Pliny. I think it was I mean, uh, water. Pliny, sit the the uh, sit. Uh, what, it's not waterfall. Sit is it's uh, the album that the bigger album that he came out with a few years ago. Sit, sit something cities. I know I'm blanking, mm -hmm. but anyway, and, uh, that's what but, I, that's what I heard. Yeah, pretty unusual. I mean, uh, unexpected. Yeah, right. That's exactly. All right. So that's a, I guess that's a good tangent to let's go down the guitar rabbit hole. So I'm really intrigued by your guitar. Is that a J Custom or, or a Lax LA Custom Shop? It is. It is indeed. It is indeed. So, and it has a beautiful story though, because okay. uh, basically, me and uh, that, that's also kind of kind of related to Thunder Pets, uh, to Thunder Pets history. Uh, Thunder Pets was born as I was mentioning at the beginning from a, a previous project called NBD mm -hmm. that we used to have in Italy. We we had the opportunity to perform uh, a couple of times in Japan, you okay. know, from Italy, and one of uh, one of those times, like had like we had the chance to meet uh, Jason McNamara, that like uh, I'm so thankful uh, with, and uh, which is an Australian guy that works in um, in a sh very famous shop in Shibuya. I don't remember another name, but so like. Uh, we got in touch to to create this this beauty, you know. Uh, so it's like a, this is a customized J custom. You okay. know? It's uh, like a beautiful. Like for me, it's like the guitar, you know, mm -hmm. the guitar. Uh, like a, it's a, it, it look it looks beautiful. It's like better to play, and uh, it's not the easiest guitar I've ever played. You know, you know what I mean. Mm. But uh, you know, like. Even if they are pieces of wood, uh, like you create like a a bond, you know. So it's, oh, for, for it's sure. a bit like a, yeah, my, it's a bit like a, my my daughter. I even named it, uh, named her like Dorothea mm -hmm. from from Greek, uh, daughter of gods, daughter of the gods, and Dorothea, amazing. That's awesome. What pickups does it have? Uh, they're like a ceramic Dimarzio. No, I don't remember exactly the the model, but. Uh, they like a, it, like they, they are the original ones, the original ones. Awesome. And then I saw you playing through a revamp. Are you a, a revamp artist or? No, hopefully not yet. <laughs> but like because I tell you, when I discovered Rev, I I was astonished, you know, because like that little head, the I have the D twenty. Yep. You know, it's one of the um, one of the game changing. In my opinion, that that head, that little head, because mm. uh, you know it's like a valve amp, 
the first is a large box, you know, so it's something small. You can take it wherever, like no one complains about it. But then it's, it's a valve amp and uh, you can, um, uh, they, did, they did it in collaboration with the torpedo, you know. So mm -hmm. like basically you have like a, a simulations of uh, cabinet simul simulations yep. inside, you know, that you can, you have a six preset that you can uh, change uh, through the software. Mm -hmm. But it's the best thing in the world, you know, because that, that amp is in a, like an exclusively clean amp, you know, because uh, I love uh, using distortions on uh, clean, you know. Yep. You can, and it's, it's incredible how like they, they, they mix these two words, you know, like the valve amp with the, this side of a digital simulation. And um, I recently used it at Whiskey A Go Go in uh, our last gig uh, on uh, the 20. Oh, and like August, August twenty six, something 26, like that. Yeah. And it was massive. You know, you mm. see this little, little head, and like these, uh, these screams, this big voice. It's, uh, it's a uh, really one of those inventions, creation that like, uh, it, it will, it, it will. Uh, I'm sure it will be like tremendously successful, successful because it's uh, such a great idea, you know. And uh, mm. I never, I never saw it saw something like that exactly like that before so it might have existed but it didn't have the same fortune maybe but also awesome. yeah and and the uh, and you can i create my like the clean presets on the distortions you know like i use a uh, wamplers and uh blackster i get amazing distortions you know like uh, so uh, what one is more tubey the the blackster one is a bump uh, <laughs> HD metal mm -hmm. and the Wampler Plexi. It's a more warm. Right. It's a yeah. I think I after years of research, like a, I'm. It's a, for the first time. Uh, it's been like more than one year that I have exactly the same uh, parable, you know. And then of course the Morley because I'm I'm endorser of more more okay. endorser. Awesome. And and you have the bed horsey too. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah! The the best one. I, I'm a, I'm a big I'm a massive Steve Vai fan. I couldn't tell. You know? <laughs> so like, uh, <laughs> so like uh, my massive man. I can tell you, I have uh, me and my brother. We have uh, the Vai logo. Uh, Steve uh, Steve's logo. Yeah, yeah, awesome. tattooed on on the skin. <laughs> and uh, that why is uh, simply amazing. Then Morley have this thing, you know, the spring. Yep. You know? As I, I hate. I love the cry babies. You know, download. Uh, like cry baby style but i hate the switch you know like for me it's like something so not practical like mm. so something that i use the wawa a lot also you know so every time i have to be there go down click the the switch and then when i want to turn it off like a click again that that too too much of a mess you know like that that spring is a is a, a blessing you know so yeah awesome let's see let's move on to the quick fire and uh, non quick fire round what significant negative experience have you overcome and what did it teach you? Uh, as a Thunderpets or a... As anything you want to answer. Uh, you know. But we're in the middle of it. Though. Yeah, I would tell you since <laughs> I got here to today, basically. <laughs> because uh, we, we even, we even uh, released a track about it. It's called Intercontinentals. Mm -hmm. It's... Uh, we we deeply love america and we're very grateful for it it's it's just a really pain in the ass like to to be able to remain in america you know and that sounds a bit funky for us as uh, students you know because uh, you know like we came here w with a lot of efforts you know also leaving your home it's it's not something easy you know you do it bravely and um to come in America to study in the finest colleges, you know, also giving a lot of money. Fortunately, like we had like a very big scholarships in our colleges, you know, but the rent, the f the food, oh, yeah. whatever, you know, there is every. So and then uh, having so much pain and so much uh, troubles, you know, applying to artist visa and all this stuff, you know, like I had to 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 write them six to 700 pages of artist visa and it was like six months of fire and uh, i lost uh, like i don't know like i didn't sleep for half of those six months and uh, i'm still waiting the the answer for uh for the artist visa it's uh, like the process itself and we went all of us uh, 
went through it, you know, or mm-hmm. are going through it. I'm still still in the process. This is probably funny enough, like the the the, the biggest challenge as uh, as uh, musicians, if we can say that 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 we faced until today in our life, you mm-hmm. know. So. Oh yeah, that's it. I go go check out Intercontinental. So I, I was a bit bitter <laughs> in the in the track because like I was like a, a crucial point of the application, but um, but it, it's a nice track. Like you can tell that it's like uh, like um, that I speak a bit more with the gut than uh, anything else. Right. But yeah. Also, an, another very tough part, as you said before, is uh, to find people serious enough, are committed. Yeah, that's that's a problem actually, you know, because you spend a lot of money along the way and time that you wouldn't have to, but you do because you know you are here for that, right? So you play with a lot of people and uh, you invest things like that with uh, a lot of projects that are not going anywhere, you know. Mm. So you say, you know, you say we should get out from these experiences, basically. To me, it's very important to understand what size, you know, or what side people are in. Mm-hmm. If you're here or if you're there, most of the people are here. The, Almost the, everybody. Not, not particularly clear the last part, but like yeah. you know, who's serious and who's not. <clears throat> right. No, I get, I get you. And uh, very few people, you know. Plus, you know, what well, we are lucky, you know. Well, you know, he he's my brother, so. Beside that, Gune I mean, he's like a, indeed. <laughs> he, he's like um, super serious and super good at what he does, you know. Which is two things that a lot of time they don't go together, mm-hmm. you know. Being talented, like good, experienced, and serious in that project at the same time is super hard to find that in one time. So it's the three of us in it. Uh, it's and, uh, it's it's true that in a lot of cases, you know, young cats that you that you meet, like uh, I understand that they wanna they wanna um, uh, they wanna be paid and all this stuff, you know. Also, also with friends, you know, the I mean, fr- colleagues, but friends, you know. I understand that or people that wanna join. Uh, this didn't happen to us, but like uh, I see it like literally every day, you know, people. Like asking other people, friends, to join projects and all this stuff, but and they say, "Oh yeah, yeah, this is my rate," you know. And th- we are our age at the beginning, without even checking the project first, you know. People like don't understand. I personally, the, I I want to be humble, but like I personally never ask as for one cent for like a recording to like a dozens of friends, colleagues. Uh, there, there is this thing that. You know, like at our age, we're in our twenties. You know, and our age, uh, like they they constantly ask for money without even checking the projects. It's like, uh, and this may be a bit sad, just because it looks like maybe it's not, but it looks like uh, they're doing it more for money rather than for the artistic vision. And I'm I'm a bit of a romantic person, you know. So like, I I got I got a betrayed many times under this point of view you know so like like i yeah. i always hope that the reality is the another one so following the artistic path rather than the income but this is actually what happened many times and uh i mean it, it is whatever but it there's is. the thing i mean it's actually the reality of the universe today is basically you know you're chasing the wrong thing you're chasing uh, you know 90 dollars to play there you know you're chasing the to chase. have your own band you're chasing to play for free or getting paid which is ridiculous i i'm a musician i would never pay to see me i would never pay for somebody that i don't know sure i can pay you know these six dollars to come hear that that oh, honesty honesty well it's true i mean come on <laughs> i mean me, me for example it, it really depends it really depends but like uh, i i i feel what i'm sure it depends saying. but if i don't know you why would I pay to come and see you? Yeah, that's insane. Cold hearted, cold hearted, mother. Well, that's true, and, and and I don't expect you to do that, you know. Oh. So you know, I'm not looking to, you know, I'm not going to the whiskey and go and say, "Hey, how much you pay me?" You know, they look at me and laugh. I say, "What? <laughs> what are you saying? You know, how much you pay me?" You know, 
uh, is same thing as the band, the same concept. You apply that on the singular person that plays, you know, and the guy comes to you, comes to Los Angeles nine days ago, expect you to pay $1,800 to play a half of a note. It's never going to happen, you know. It's not happening because, you know, you make a name for yourself and it's not only the name, it's also the fact that you're reliable and you're serious and everything like that because people like it. And also be an nice person because if you're tough to work with, it's always a problem. People are not going to work with you, even if you're good. There's too many good people to behave like that, mm -hmm. you know. You need to be nice, not make problems. I consider that he always, always uh, uh, talks uh, being in Los Angeles, you know, so Los Angeles uh, is full of uh, peacocks, if you know what I mean. If uh, if in English you use this uh, analogy, this metaphor, it's a full, really full of peacocks, and probably somehow we're peacocks as well, you know. <laughs> but but uh, not about this thing of the money. This is also something that I saw often uh, with the Berkeley dudes, you mm -hmm. know, because I, you know, like someone go to Berkeley, graduate, and uh, understandably then say. Well, I I did Berkeley, you know, like a, also a bit in an arrogant way. Mm -hmm. I hope I don't sound like that from outside because like when I hear that, like, man, I go crazy, you know, I say, what the hell does it mean? You know, what do you mean? And, uh, but like, you, yeah, they, they, they often look for that rather than looking for the money rather than the artistic participation to something way bigger than the money, you right. know. But again, like I'm, I'm a romantic, so... It might be all stupid, you know, like no. or like utopic. I don't know, but right. no, I, I I'm with you. I like go, hey, go, for, yeah, the, go for the yeah, artistic. I mean, that's together. Yeah, that's what music is. It's you know making. It's a conversation on a deeper level, and that's what's important. Yeah. I mean, the money comes and goes. Yeah, so. it's it's a correct, you know. But then I I'm not saying that you. You shouldn't. You shouldn't ever you have for money. You know. Yeah, you got away, but. You know, if if uh, if you know the oops, like the person very well, or if you listen to the project and uh, and it's a, it's a very nice project. You know, uh, half of the people I'm not gonna say who, obviously, but half of the people that they they that they are featured in uh, the EP uh, that I'm gonna release with the elements. Uh, they they didn't ask me for money because like the and they are like big names, you know. Mm -hmm. But like they heard the or the single. I, I recently released a single as a M Dandy with the Steve on drums, uh, featuring uh, Charlie Parra, the Riego, Joe Stamp, and Michelangelo Batio. Also, there I'm not gonna say who, but like uh, they, I, I was not asked for money, you know, because like uh, if some if you like the project and uh, if you think that it can give you, you know, you can it, it can raise a bit like your artistic uh, path mm -hmm. or whatever other reason similar to that. I could just do it in uh, like in the name of art, you know, like uh, what the hell? But uh, so it's something that I I used to learn something, you know. So actually, I'm grateful that this happened because I mm. that I, I I think I used to be like that in my teen, and then I completely changed my vision about that, and I feel also a better person, other than a, not just a better musician, you know. Fantastic. All right. So, what major positive experience has given you the push to follow this journey? Well, for now, not too much, <laughs> you know, just our own head is pushing. Mm. But I, I, no, I've been, I've been involved in very good things, concerts, things. I've been meeting people that there was no way I, I would have, you know, if I wasn't here, if I didn't meet the people and play, even with Fire Tiger, you know, I met a lot of big people for different reasons, different occasions. And it's just like, you know, you figure a lot of people just like how you are as a person, like how you are as a musician, you know, and they just want to be friends in a Los so, Angeles. So the, so the question, I may, I may have misunderstood the question. So like, what, what is the question? So it was there, was there anything in your history that kind of gave you the push to even even going back to when you started playing, you know, as a child or or, or you know, as a teenager, like was there any one experience that gave you the the push to 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 follow music as a journey? 
Ah, no. So, okay, like, no. Like for, like, the satisfaction? No, um, but, but for me, like, it depends. Like, uh, I guess it, it would be like a different answer from all of us. But yeah. I mean, I can speak also for my brother in this case. You know, it's historically, no. But um, when we were, like, you know, we were raised uh, musically by our uh, dad. Uh, that is a massive mu- music lover. And um, I remember like a game changing thing, like literally game changing was uh, the, it, it's, it's not really, it's a music experience, yes, but not as musicians, you know, we were like, I don't know, like s- uh, seven years old and uh, eight years old, me. And um, our dad, I remember, and imagine I was not even a guitar player. A guitar player at the time i was a cello player mm-hmm. like a, like a eight years old uh, seven eight years old cello player and my brother was a flute player and still is by the way and um he wanted to show us uh, joe satriani you know uh, Ma- massive i love him to death but in uh, the g3 hell yeah in the g3 i think live in uh not minneapolis i don't remember but the one with the um Silvai Satriani and Eric Johnson, mm-hmm. you know, and we were completely astonished by Steve Vai, you know, in two moments. It was, you, look, it's so clear that it was it, like it was yesterday. It was so shocking that at the end of For the Love of God, during uh, Steve Vai's set, he, he does, you know, some improvisation mm-hmm. on, a, on a pedal, you know, on a low E, and um, he does those effects, you know, that, uh, it looks like he's literally speaking at a certain point that he does uh, volume down, uh, whammy bar uh, down as well. Mm-hmm. He release, he plays an harmonic, he released the whammy bar and opened the volume and uh, raised the hand, you know, like he's screaming, you know. And it was so real that I had goosebumps in that, mo- in that moment, like a huge goosebumps. And I was like... Uh, you know, I eight years old, seven, eight. I was like, damn, this this guy is, is damn talking through the guitar. I mean, why the, like, the sound of his voice is going through, mm-hmm. it's coming out through his guitar, you know? And that devastated me, you know, in a, in a good way. And then um, that was like the most, uh, like almost intimate part of it, you know? The, it, what the most cool part was like uh, in the final jam all together, him playing, you know, the riff of um, uh, My Guitar Want to Kill Your Ma by uh, the Magic Friends Up, another name on my skin. Mm-hmm. And um, there was just, you know, like with the sunglasses uh, all black and uh, the guitar kind of low, you know, played the the riff. It was like, <laughs> it was like a, I mean, I want to do this job, you know, <laughs> when I... When, when, when I so that that was like a game changing in uh, our experience. Also, you know the fact that we knew since we were like super little that we would come here either way. Because our father said, "If you don't want to be a musician, I'm always gonna love you. How, you know whatever you do. But if you want to be a musician, there's only one way to make it, which is practice a lot and whatever. But." Also, a big, uh, like, important thing is to move from Italy. That's 100%. Yeah. But yeah. what was the game changing for self decisor? This, I, I don't even know, you know, and I even them lived with him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the first time I listened to Skrillex. Okay. Uh, like, Ooh, I love that. It was, uh, my name is Skrillex. My name is Skrillex. Yeah, I was like, what the, is yeah, this? right? How, how does this sound like this? Yeah, the power of sound cool. design, yeah. it's like, it changed my life. I, yeah, that gets crazy. I, I like heavy music a lot. I was listening to um, metal and um, rock, yeah. but remember my friend showed me the screw legs. It was really heavy, but the sound, like how it moves, the yeah. tune, like it, it's... I love- Skrillex is really bad, dude. I, I, I love that guy so bad. And yeah. I, I kind of think that I can, I can see like a Skrillex uh, uh, vibes uh, on uh, in your in your voice, you know. And yeah, then, he's a great influence for me. Yeah, yeah, yes, I love that man. Yeah, that 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 guy is insane. Skrillex is really insane. That's awesome. All right, so final question is: What does music mean to you? Damn, that's, well, that's telling a, a story. Yeah, yeah it's uh, inspiration and passion. So, so, it's basically transmitting some feeling to other people mm-hmm. and uh, 
let them, you know, dream something bigger. I, I, I'm much more egoistic for that, you know, like, I think, I, I, I mean, selfish. I, I, I write music for myself, mm -hmm. like, not, not for other people. And, uh, like, uh, I, it's just like a, the nicest way, in my opinion, and in my experience, to just um, uh, exteriorize. Do you say in English, exteriorize? Um, exteriorize. Uh, put, get put that, I mean, that works. To, that, that, that works. Like, uh, my, just like feelings that I, mm -hmm. I feel for things that I lived, you know, that I experienced, you know. If, if you also read my titles or like uh, you listen to the Thunderpest tracks, they always refer to something like a really specific and or a person like a really specific person you mm -hmm. know so you know like and for example with in am dandy or with uh, am dandy and the elements uh, i play mostly instrumental music that's why like instrumental music sometimes is uh, it's a lot better to express some feeling feelings rather than words you know using lyrics but uh, yeah it's like a, kind of just put out uh, like feelings that I need to be out of mm. myself, you know, that I wanted to, not to share, but just to be out, you know? So yeah, I guess I'm a, I'm a selfish motherfucker, but like, <laughs> um, like I mean, I, that, that's what it is. I mean, not, not everyone right to share with the world, you know, like this is like a, it's okay. It's a respect or respectful, but that's uh yeah, I, 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 I guess this made me now a bad person. I was saying like, I'm a romantic, romantic, this, and then no money. And then, <laughs> and then now I'm a selfish bastard. I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, telling our stories with the using uh, the power of vibration uh, to, you know, bring those emotions mm -hmm. to the, our listeners. That's uh, what's music for us. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, but I, I totally get the guitar part i think a lot a lot of guitar players i know uh it, it's it's about self-healing so to, to you know the music getting out to other people and other people relating to it is is like a side side effect of it yeah but like being able to write and get your feelings down as you said not not with lyrics but with the melodies is yeah it's, oh, it's, it's yeah. self-healing it's... Yeah, I know. I agree. I also also wanted to tell you. I forgot at the beginning. I saw the interview on the podcast. I still have to check it out. Mike Abdo. Yep. Is that from Face Warning? Yep. You know, like uh, I'm, ah. I'm like uh, that's that's amazing because like we have like a ear like years and years long story with him. I mean, um, we we opened with another project, me and my brother, uh, to Face Warning mm -hmm. uh, in Italy in uh, oh, wow. probably two thousand and. Yeah, in Turin at the Audiodrome. Yeah, Audiodrome in, Italy, you know. in a 2009, maybe, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, we were super late. Huh? Yeah, no, 2012, 2012. And um, it was amazing. I mean, he's an incredible guitar oh, player, yeah. like, and, and such a nice person. And since then, we're like, uh, we're in touch. Like, sometimes, like, you know, we, we chat on Facebook or Instagram and... Um, that's amazing. When I saw, I said, I'm going to check it out as soon as I can and uh, still have to do that. But like, uh, that's, that was uh, like a very, very sweet surprise. Awesome. Sweet surprise. Did you, did you um, get to meet up while you were in Boston? Because he lives in Western Mass, I think. He, he lives very close, but we never met. Oh, wow. You know, like my, our years at Berkeley were like, you know, like Berkeley is, is, is tough if you're a performer. Like uh, you literally... Like you literally practice uh, mm -hmm. as much as you can, you know. So we, I and plus, uh, like I didn't really have a social life, uh, so, <laughs> so in between relationships and uh, studying, so so um, I didn't have the the opportunities. But like sometimes, you know, talking, we kind of we kind of hope that uh, one day soon uh, we're going to meet uh, and play together either in Los Angeles or uh, I don't know, New York, whatever. Yeah. I think he's, hasn't he just got a, a new band together? Um, ESO to, to play. Oh, hey, solo yeah. Stuff? So yeah. I, hey, hopefully yeah, that's, he's going to be touring. That's why. Yeah. 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 Hopefully. Yeah. And if he's going to, if he's going to tour things that are probably going to happen, mm. he's going to for sure come over to uh, Los Angeles and, uh, 
I w- like uh, at that, like since the first and only time I met him, we didn't really talk because it was the first time mm-hmm. uh, there with a the face warning, and um, like I can't wait really to 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 make it happen. You know, I can't wait. He's a, an incredible musician, incredible soul. You know, absolutely. Like, yeah, that was killer. So, all right, that that's excellent. Where can people get in touch with you guys and check out your music? But mostly. Check out music on any streaming platform, and uh, a lot of tunes uh, are are coming out like uh, by Thunderpets. And uh, the easiest way to get in touch with us is either uh, through our uh, Instagrams, both the uh, Thunderpets page um, or like our uh, our um, artist page, or through Big Ryan from One Percenters, and that always like uh, always good way to get in touch with us awesome and i'll 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 link everything in the show notes as well so people can check that out thank you very much so thank you Simon. oh you're welcome at the end i like to play a piece of music by the people i'm, I'm interviewing so what track can we hear ah it's up to you my man like uh or like uh, what, what what's your ah so we also the i'm gonna also discover what what is your favorite track guy because i never asked <clears throat> so my favorite one is draw to cali you know <laughs> to cali. um what about Kanka? I think Road to Cali. Ah, Road to Cali is cool. Okay. Apparently. Road to Cali Excellent. Is cool. All right. Well, this has been a great conversation. I really appreciate you guys uh, taking the time. Definitely looking forward to uh, checking out all of the music and the projects, you know, more in depth. So, um, yeah, keep in touch and thank you again. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It was thank really you. nice to talk to you. Hopefully it's going to happen soon again. Thank you so much for listening. I'd really appreciate it if you would leave a review on iTunes or your favorite podcast platform as this really helps get the word out about the podcast so other musicians can benefit from the awesome knowledge that my guests are sharing. The more the musicians community collectively learns, the stronger we will become. A rising tide lifts all ships. This episode is sponsored by the Skinny Armadillo Printing Company in Fort Worth, Texas, offering a full range of apparel decoration and promotional items such as screen printing, embroidery, laser engraving, and much more. The Skinny Armadillo is now offering a merch fulfillment service including on-demand printing and a custom-built web store so you can concentrate on your music and running your business as a musician. Visit theskinnyarmadillo.com or call 817-546-1430 to learn how the Skinny Armadillo can help you take your merch to the next level. Keep pushing the needle and be excellent to each other. This is Thunder Pets with Road to Cali. Desert lives. 